I got a new light for this camera, and my goodness, is it bright. Thank you guys for joining me on another episode. This episode, this particular weekend, and as a matter of fact, was extremely, extremely fun. We got to spend it with a, a couple of great guys that flew from Detroit, from Michigan. And they flew down to the Rue McCoy Ranch with us to come hunt. And it was so awesome. We had such a good time. And those guys were great. It was, it was uh, Langston and his dad. And they ended up, well, Langston ended up tagging a nice, I say tag, I don't know why I said tag. He ended up shooting a very nice Audad and a good pig to go along with it. It was so busy as soon as we had gotten into the blind that I didn't film an intro while we were in there. I didn't want to spook anything off. However, we did do something really neat that I think I'm going to continue to do more of. I know whenever Langston and his dad come back for their second trip with us in March that we're going to do uh, basically like a Q&A, just a real short, like maybe 15 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, just sort of Q&A kind of podcast. It's not going to be very long. I'm going to do these every so often with certain groups with certain people that would want to join in and just share their experience. Um, at the ranch and um, ask me some questions I can ask them some questions so on and so forth it'd be really really neat now we kind of did like a spin-off type of deal of this uh, one evening I think it was like Saturday evening everybody was kind of sitting around and, and relaxing after a good day of hunting and I was asked some questions and so this is gonna be really different this is gonna be something that uh, I don't think that I've ever shared on the channel before or, or have even shared very much of and it's just uh, it's like 10 to 12 minutes long I think of just me answering questions from a bunch of my buddies there um, Mondo and Brennan and I think Dylan may have asked me some questions those uh, three guys they're a part of the team they're a part of the crew out at the Rue McCoy Ranch and you guys will get to see them whenever you come and book a hunt with me through me and um, they will be there to help out do uh, all kinds of things as far as like guiding skinning and cleaning animals Brennan does a lot of the cooking Mondo does a majority of the cleaning of the animals and Dylan does some animal cleaning and some guiding as well as some helping out just odds and ends stuff but we are a very well oiled machine we're a good team this is a group that we've had together for him couple of years now and you guys will hear me touch a little bit on uh, some of that as we progress into this video I was originally not gonna uh, add this part in but I decided I would, would just go ahead and throw it in and it made the video a little bit longer made uh, I think it just added a good twist to it I wanted to throw something in different and if you guys have any questions for me drop them down in the comment section below one thing that I really like about doing the live videos that I do every once in a while is that y'all can ask me some questions that are just random, completely random. And that's kind of what makes a live video so much fun. But like I said, if you have any questions for me, uh, just drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability if I can. And if you guys like this short little segment that you're fixing to see here before we get into the actual meat and potatoes of this video, drop a comment down below again and let me know if you do like it. If you don't, uh, let me know about that too. Like I said, I was kind of torn on whether or not I was going to put this clip or this section of the video in here. It's kind of an unofficial intro, but I decided I was going to go ahead and do it anyway. With that being said, let's jump into it right now. We're out in Texas, but we got here. All right, so we're out here at the Rumble Court Ranch. Orby came down for another awesome weekend. Um, we're starting it. We got a black book. And, and all that. We got a scimitar. We got a zebra. We got a buffalo. We got giraffe. Everything on the, we got a giraffe too. We got all that on the ground this weekend. Good weekend. Hey, y'all visit. Hey, y'all visit. The real McCoy ranches. Ranches. Right. Coming out to live. What brings you into the hunting world? Maybe being a Q and A. We'll do a Q and A. Okay. Okay, Mondo. Ask the question. Where did you, when did you decide to pick up a bull for the first time? Like 12, 13 years old. Bryce Haney. What's been your best experience of bow hunting? Africa. Why? Elaborate, come on. Well, what, it, what classifies best? The best experience you had with a bow in a hunting career. Okay, again, what classifies best? Like, number of animals I've killed in a certain amount of time, well, as far best, as trophies go. Trophy wise, there we go. Um, like your best hunt that you're like, man, this is the one that got me, got my heart pumping. Man, I'll have to dig back in the archives for that one. <laughs> um, I think he gets excited with shooting a pig just as much as he yeah, shoots I do. a pig. Yeah, I do. I do. But, uh, 
My Axis deer here was oh. one of those ones. My Fallow buck here. My Aw Dad got me excited, but it wasn't expected. As a matter of fact, you talk, I think somebody talked me into that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shoot. Um, Just see the mouth there. My, one of my, my very first whitetail buck that I shot with my bow. That'd be a split so, round, all right? No. No? No, that was like four or five bucks down the line. It was a three-legged whitetail. Oh. oh. <laughs> it, was it, was a, it was a tall eight point. Oh, well, he, yeah, he was tall. He was barely legal. Uh, he had like eight inch brow tines. Oh. Yeah, he was awesome. Legal. That one got me really excited. Three legs, no tail, one eye. Big pigs all the way around, you know, 250 plus, those are the ones that get me really amped up. Brendan, get him a question. What else you got? No, I got a question. Okay. What was the hardest thing about learning, like, how to bow hunt? What was the most challenging part of it? Well, I guess, like learning the process or just like the technique the tech like learning the technique yes, what was learning the technique. um being consistent with an anchor point because depending on what release you're using and i had a bad habit of just getting excited and drawing back and oh, i'll anchor here this time or i'll anchor here this time or so that was kind of tough um yeah that wasn't so bad but as far as like after you learn the process and you move on down the line and what's harder day or night hunting? Night hunting is definitely more difficult, but more rewarding. What's the best tasting animal? Uh, kudu. Kudu is pretty good. Red deer and axis are up there. Um, I really love orcs. I've eaten 40, 50 different species, but um, yeah, kudu is up there at the top. Got anything? Do I have anything? Uh, what's your most memorable animal that you killed? Before we, before I answer that question, let I want to introduce you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to introduce Langston. So Langston came out to the Rue McCoy Ranch to be a part of the weekend. Him and his dad, and we're originally after Axis or All Dad, and we got it done on the first day. You guys have obviously uh, seen that in this video so far. I'll tan this back over to you. Um, not an, uh, not an official intro for the video, but I wanted to make sure that um, Langston made it in more than one part of this video than just the hunting side of it. This is what we do. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, after our morning hunts and our evening hunts, we end up here in the lodge watching TV, shooting pool, uh, hanging out, uh, having a good time, eating good food, and hanging out with some of the best people that I know on this earth. But my most memorable bow kill would be... Man, I like I could classify, I could break it up into like Texas animals and and African animals, and then I could break it up into my exotics as well. Exotic Texas, yeah. Animal. Exactly. My exotic Texas animal. Um, like your favorite hunt. My some of my most favorite hunts have been with everybody that involved. So like the hunts that Dylan was a part of and Jerry was a part of and Brennan was a part of, we we're all sitting in the blind together. Like my black buck hunt, my black buck hunt was very interesting. It was very special mm -hmm. to me. My, uh, my axis hunt was very special to me. Uh, my, my fallow hunt was also really, really memorable. But I think if I had to pick one out of all of them, it'd be my black buck hunt because we were all together as a group, as a team. And then I think up next after that would have to be probably my fallow with my mom because it was just me and her in the blind. And that was really special, really fun. Uh, as far as whitetails goes, um, that same, that, that eight point, that super tall eight point, the tall brows. What are you laughing at? Oh, it's, it's oh. sister's calling on FaceTime. You know how that's gonna go. And then as far as African animals go, my Ginsbach. That one, that one really stood out in the whole 10 days that we were there, eight days that we were there. Do you miss the old Dodge? No. <laughs> the old tank? Hey, miss? that thing is lined up on the Ukraine if, border right now. Ready, <laughs> ready to made, ready if, made. If so. you're a long time follower, you remember the one ton Dodge. And if you do remember that, leave a comment down below. Mm -hmm. I doubt that there's a well, tank. There's got to be. Some, some people told me in a comment last week that they've been following me since like. 10,000 subscribers and I still had the old 
tank at that point. So if you remember that black Dodge that I had, leave a comment down below. I'm curious to know who remembers and who doesn't. How does it feel to be part of the Rue McCoy Ranch and see it grow from what it was back then to what it is now? You coming out here and you know I'm not seeing, out seeing here. to where it started with yeah. no lodge, you know, nothing. Now. Sleeping in a, on the cots inside in the living room. Yep. To having your own room. To sleeping in the in the skinning shed. So, Mondo, where Mondo's office is. <laughs> so years ago, my very first hunt here with Dylan, Gage was here, um, and Mr. Nino here. There was the four of us, just us. And I was hunting axis deer, and I ended up shooting red deer cow that weekend as well. And I pitched this idea to Jerry, and I said, what if we do this? Like, what if we grow it to basically what it is now. We were literally standing around a stand-up heater, propane heater in the shop, freezing our butts off. And we were sleeping in the shop on cots. Well, they weren't cots. It wasn't, it wasn't that. It wasn't that rough. It wasn't no. that rough. Yeah, we had air conditioning and heat. We, could, yeah. we can't, we can't. No, we had a room. We had a room. We had a room and a, a twin size bed each. Um, no, we slept no, together. We, we slept in the same room. We did have an ice machine in the room with us that scared the crap out of us when it would go off in the middle of the night. Sounded like an atomic bomb was yeah, dropping like in. Yeah, like a bomb going off. Um, and then as we progressed, we it was like a two-year-long period where we slowly got busier and busier. And Mondo came out one of those first years, and he ended up getting trapped. He's the skinner on the ranch now. And, Ooh, yeah. Um, Gosh, it's been three years ago the lodge broke ground. Janitor back here. Janitor, yeah. Um, he's the cook. He does a good job. Yeah, that's the cook. That's the chef. Oh, look. look at that. Hey, let me see them locks one more time. That volume? <laughs> that's volume right there. Look at that. We progressed, broke ground on the lodge about three years ago. In the sp yeah, it was in spring. Almost three years ago. Broke, almost broke almost ground. Uh, I'll never forget, we had a hunter in camp that weekend. You were driving the tractor back and forth, picking up uh, loads of uh, fill dirt and filling out for the pad here. The concrete guys came out a couple weekends after that, and they filled everything. They, were, they poured the slab, and we did all that. The plumbers came out, roughed it in, and then we spent, it was about a, I don't know, about a year later, roughly two summers ago in August, me and Dylan and Brennan and... I don't think you were there that weekend. Jerry and my one of my good buddies, Bryce, we, I'm an electrician um, as a trade. That's, that's my 40 hour, that's my, my day job. And we came down, I, uh, got all the material together. We roughed in the whole 100 by 30, 100 by 40 lodge in a weekend. We busted it out in the weekend. Oh, well that was everything but the lights. We didn't rough in anything up in the ceiling. Came back a weekend after that and did all that, and then after the trim in, well, after everything was dried in, we came back and trimmed everything in in one more weekend. We busted a lot of butt that weekend, or those three, four weekends combined. Dylan only got shocked once, and I was gone. I was off the ranch picking up parts, so I, I don't really take fault for that one. Somebody you didn't turn lied. off the you right lied to me. <laughs> I didn't lie to you. I said, oh, it's, but the, 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 there's no power running to that switch. <laughs> and somebody somebody, didn't, turn the somebody right didn't turn off the right nope. We won't say who. Nobody died, obviously. <laughs> so that's a plus. Um, roughed it in, and then the summer last year, yeah, summer last year, uh, all the lights went in, all the, the fans, I spent a couple hours we put up all the fans. I didn't put up the fans, I wired in the fans. That would be Jerry and Brennan, they did a good job. Got some uh, awesome, awesome fans, layout, everything as far as electrical goes, lights, all that good stuff. TV, we have an enormous, show them the TV up there. This is in the great room, huge, what is it, 80, 85? We like, we like to watch sports and stuff in between hunts, watching football games, baseball, basketball, whatever. Um, Lodge, the great room itself is incredible. Got a, a bar set up here, full bar, and the pool table, and speakers, and the coffee bar, and everything. Everybody's loved it and enjoyed it so far. It's been, it's been great. It's been a lot of hard, hard work. A lot of aspirations and dreams that um, we've talked about over the years, and it's come to fruition. And lots of, lots of hard work once again. But I have to say big thanks to.
Thank you. you. Boss man over there. Boss man. I don't know about that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel like the boss man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been cool. It's been very cool, to say the least. It's it's kind of hard to give uh, a description, give words to it. Big effort from everybody. Big effort from everybody. Big effort. Couldn't have done it by myself. Work. A lot of teamwork. Let's, yeah. We're big about teamwork around here. We're a good operation. By the way, uh, we accommodate everybody from anywhere. So Langston and his dad, Mark, they flew from Michigan. And we picked them up at the airport in San Antonio, San Antonio International Airport. And we've had a lot of guys drive in. We've had close to 10 states, 10 different states now that have come and hunted with us as far as California and Michigan, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, I think Colorado, Colorado uh, Arkansas, Minnesota, Arkansas, Arkansas uh, Arizona. I think I already said Arizona. Um, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana. We've had, Louisiana. We've had. Oh man, that's more. It's got to be ten or more. But anyway, we've had a lot of people travel all over. Um, we accommodate every, anyone and everyone. Children, women, men, all the same. Uh, it's great. So if anybody's interested, all the information is down in the description below. You can come and book a hunt. You can find my social media, my email, all that good stuff, and, and you can hit me up and we can book a hunt and put it together. You can come spend a weekend at the ranch with us and the crew and have a good time just like Langston and his dad has this. Yeah, with all the knuckleheads uh, like we're doing this weekend. Lots of animals, lots of good times, lots of memories. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Let me know again what you think. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, I'm, I'm open for input. I want to hear y'all's input and y'all's opinion on the Q&As. Moving on, first things first, as we're uh, getting into the real good part of this video that a lot of you clicked on it for, is for the hunting action. So, started out that first Friday evening, uh, we've actually picked Mark and Langston up from the airport, uh, San Antonio International Airport, and we drove them back to the ranch, stopped for some lunch on the way, and then it was like as soon as we pulled up, uh, we hung out for about an hour, I guess, and got those guys situated in their room. And then we changed clothes, loaded up some equipment, some gear, and hit the blind. And it was a very, very eventful evening, starting right here with this pig. I was going to play that clip in slow motion and it decided it would be uh, better that I didn't. So we found this pig 
it didn't run, but like, well, as soon as it went inside the brush, like where you guys saw it run and, and fall right inside the brush, it was already starting to get wobbly legged. It was a wild shot, but it didn't make it far. Just right inside the brush fell over and we were able to recover that hog after dark. It worked out great. We got that pig cleaned and on ice and that's, I think, I think we ended up putting it in the freezer. We're gonna do a barbecue with it here sometime here pretty soon. Moving kind of into the grand finale of this video, I had the intentions of putting Langston on a Axis or an Audad. He That was what he was wanting, one of the two. And we watched some Audad, three, well actually it was five total Rams, but three of them that were really, really solid. One had just phenomenal mass, but he wasn't as long as the other two. And then one of them had really, really good length to his horns, but not quite as good a mass. And then there was one that had good mass, good length, and good chaps. And so that was the one that he ended up taking, and I couldn't have picked out a better one for him. And he was so stoked. He was so excited. He made a good, clean shot. And I want you guys to check it out right now. I hope that you'll enjoy it. Not always do I split these videos up and do some narrating in between, but sometimes I just kind of like to change up the pace and throw something in a little bit different. Kind of like I said at the very beginning of this video, throwing in that little Q&A for you guys. Something just different. See what you like, see what you don't like, testing the water, seeing how you guys enjoy it. Overall, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you do want to come hunt exotics or whitetail or hogs or whatever, shoot me a email. You can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. All of my social media is down in the description below. If you guys have Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram. Let's help get this ball rolling this year. The goal, don't forget, is 100,000 subscribers for the year. We're at 48,410. At 50,000 subscribers, I'm giving away an all expenses trip, uh, two day, one night for a hog hunt at the Real McCoy Ranch. And I'm looking so forward to doing that, to giving back a hunt to you guys. We've been talking, I've been talking about doing it for some time now, and we just never could. Um, either meet the, the subscriber mark or whatever it may be but I think this year um, regardless of the time frame at 50,000 subscribers I'm gonna give away that hog hunt for sure I'm gonna pick one of you guys randomly out of the comment section and if you want to be entered in to win you have to go back to the video that is linked at the very top of the description and make sure that you are also subscribed to the channel um, but you have to leave a comment on that video there is not gonna be any time restraint on this giveaway this hunt giveaway at 50,000 however if we don't get to 100,000 followers by the end of this year 2022 then we're not gonna be I'm not gonna do the exotic hunt giveaway so guys be sure that you're sharing these videos be sure that you send them to your friends send them to your family tell everybody to subscribe share them to your social medias everything I want to hit 100,000 this year not just for me uh, personally but I want to be able to start doing uh, more giveaway hunts and as we progress and get closer to that hundred thousand mark and beyond that I will have the ability to do more hunt giveaways and I'll just if I can I'll just start doing them like quarterly maybe or I'll give away a fishing trip with me all expenses paid uh, however we can however I can give back to you guys so it's not just a take 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 or a give 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 it's it's going to be a two-way street whatever you guys give i want to make sure that i give back in return and make sure that there's plenty of opportunities to take some of you guys that may not get the opportunity to go out and do this sorts of thing i want to make sure that i can provide the opportunity to as many of you as i possibly can as we progress through this year and into the years to come so thank you so much for watching once again be sure that you're subscribed you guys are awesome and i will see you in just a couple days them had their own sins down
down to the river Every man has felt the shame All I've learned